Hey guys, good evening. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. So this is me, Siva Prasad, and as you know, I am bringing this lecture series to you on science and technology current affairs, right? So I hope you watched my session one where I discussed about notifiable diseases. Then we talked about uh, Mars solar conjunction, right? I hope uh, it was understood to you. In case there are any questions, you can leave comments over here. I will definitely look up the comments and try to come up with answers in the future sessions I am doing with all of you, right? So before starting today's session, as you know, I have to tell you about one of the initiatives undertaken by an academy to make learning more exciting and fun for you, right? It's already an enriching activity. Our objective is to make it more easier and more fun for you. So that's the reason we came up with the concept of an academy combat, right? This is the most competitive gamified UPSC civil services battle that you're going to face you're going to compete with thousands and thousands of learners i also participated in this and it was a very fun event many of my students and other learners participated in this this is completely free of cost this is a fortnightly contest this is held on every sunday the previous one was held on december 6th that means on december 20th 2020 the next session will be held the timing is going to remain the same that is at 11 a.m all right so let me just spend a couple of minutes and tell you about the an academy combat so there are challenging questions and these are curated by some of the best and academy educators, right? These questions are unparalleled high quality level questions with a lot of thinking and foresight has been, you know, in, invested while coming up with these questions. This is super fast and fun. There is real time ranking. You can see your ranks go up and down. You get an opportunity to compete with some of the best aspirants in this particular field. Following the UPSC combat, a detailed video solution will be provided by one of the top educators on an academy, all right? So as I told you, you will be given scores. There are negative markings as well. So you will be able to evaluate where you're going wrong. There is a leaderboard and I I would, you know, encourage all of you to try to make it to one of the top few ranks and be a part of the leaderboard so that you are acting as an inspiration for the rest of the aspirants. And this is also a self-motivation for you if you're one of the top leaders whose name is appearing in the leaderboard. You get ratings and there are a lot of awards that you get to earn. You get a lot of batch of honors, etc. These are things you can unlock depending on your performance, right? So if you look at the contest format, there are going to be 45 minutes allocated. Overall, there are 60 questions and we have around 13 combats that are planned for you. We have six different sections you're going to be tested on. There's going to be relative scoring. And as I told you, this is a fortnightly competition. That means every fortnight, that means every two weeks, you're going to have this contest. This is going to be held on alternate Sundays. Take every every alternative Sundays. You're going to have this competition. So it's giving you an opportunity to prepare for the contest as well. All right. The most exciting aspect is that not only do you get an enriching experience and a learning experience out of this combat, you also get to win amazing prices. Like for example, there's this MacBook, Apple MacBook in store for people who are scoring the first rank. Then we have Apple iPad mini for people who are scoring second rank. Then for third rank, we have Apple AirPods. And then for the top 100 rankers, we are giving out 1000 Amazon vouchers. All right. This is a wonderful experience. I hope all of you are as enthusiastic about this as I am. As I told you, this is completely a free contest. You don't have to, uh, you know, spend any amount of money over here. All you require for unlocking this particular package is you would require a code. So you can just use this code AKM Siva. You will be able to avail this particular, uh, you know, opportunity and try and compete in this combat. All right. With this, let us actually take up today's topic. So as I told you, we are doing some uh, concepts from science and technology current affairs. Along the same lines, let's talk about something called as magnetospheric multi-scale mission. All right. Let's try to understand this. First of all, remember, this is NASA's mission. All right. So if it's a mission by ISRO, something related to India, then we need to understand it in greater depth. Like how are we launching it? Which orbit are we putting into? Is it going to be launched by a PSLV, GSLV, PSLV C-43? What is it? Those things, those information, those details you need to remember. Take care. So if it's a, a mission by NASA, so maybe all the trivial details you can just skip. All right. Overall objective of the mission, you understand. You understand what is this concept it is trying to interpret. That's all. That should be enough for missions that are launched by other agencies. All right. By international agencies like NASA, uh, you know, European Space Agency, Japan Space Agency or Russian Space Agency, etc. All right. This is a NASA's mission. The idea is to study magnetic reconnection. What exactly do we mean by magnetic reconnection? Reconnection. It means how the sun's magnetic field and the earth's magnetic field, they connect and then disconnect. All right. Let's try to understand it in a more simpler way. All right. Let me use a different color. Let's say this is the sun. All right. Then let's make this is your earth. All right. So if you see 
let's try to take this color red this is sun's magnetic field all right it's trying to draw the sun's magnetic field it looks like somewhat like this all right you can pardon my drawing nevertheless you are able to understand what i'm trying to achieve out of this right this is sun's magnetic field let us use blue's color and depict the earth's magnetic field it's going to look somewhat like this all right All right, so this is Earth's magnetic field that I'm trying to draw over here. So if you see, there are these particular points, this point, this point, this point, etc. Right, this point, this point. These are places where the magnetic field of the Earth and the magnetic field of the Sun they are interacting. They are coming in contact with each other. So this is a place where they are connecting. At the same time, these are places where they are disconnecting. All right. So this is what we would like to observe. We would like to see how the magnetic field of the Earth and the magnetic field of the Sun, they are connecting and disconnecting. Right. There are four identical spacecrafts. We are expecting them to orbit around the Earth. These are orbiting in a pyramidical shape. Take it. So that means where are we going to place the aircrafts? Right. We are going to place them in a pyramidical fashion. Pyramid means it looks like this. So that means you'll have one here, one here, one here, and one more here. All right. So this is how you are going to place it. Okay. Probably somewhere like this. In this pyramidical fashion, you will see these satellites that are going to make this observation regarding connection and disconnection of the magnetic fields. They are going to be orbiting around this Earth in this pyramidical fashion. All right. Magnetic reconnection, remember, is unique to plasma. Okay. Reconnection, it occurs when the magnetic field lines, they cross and they release a gigantic burst of energy. So I am saying connection. What do you mean by connection? What exactly does this connection mean? What exactly event occurs during this connection? So when this connection is made, when the Earth's magnetic field and the Sun's magnetic field, they are connecting, they are coming in contact. At this point of time, there is a release of humongous amounts of energy, right? There's a gigantic burst of energy, all right? It taps the energy stored in the magnetic fields and turns it into heat and energy in the form of charged particles, all right? So you might ask this question. Where is this huge amount of energy coming from? So basically, you see, in these magnetic fields, large amount of energies are stored, right? When they are coming in contact during this connection process, this stored amount of energy in the magnetic field is turned into heat. And it is turned into energy in the form of charged particles. There are some particles, right? These are charged particles. These will be accelerated at a very, very high pace. Okay, that means it's getting converted into kinetic energy and into heat energy. All right, so whatever energy is stored in these magnetic fields is getting converted into this high kinetic energy. Why? Because you are accelerating a humongous number of particles, right? Then there's this heat also that is released. So these accelerated particles will be detected by these satellites. All right, so as a part of this mission, NASA is going to detect these particles. All right, and there's going to be large scale flow of matter. All right, this is what. Right. These particles will be captured. We will be able to understand their acceleration, energy can be computed, etc. Based on this, we can calculate the amount of energy that was stored in these magnetic fields. So this helps us understand the connection and disconnection process better. All right. If you see, this is this is the connection and the disconnection. Pardon me. All right. However, magnetic reconnection can only be studied in situ in our solar system and near the Earth's face. All right. This, this, if you want to really observe this phenomena, etc., these particles, they are not able to travel for very long distances. Like they don't travel to the interiors of the Earth, to the surface of the Earth. So if you really want to capture these particles and want to understand the concept of magnetic connection, reconnection, etc., you have to study them in situ. You have to have them in the Earth's space. You have to actually put them over here in the places where I have drawn. Otherwise, you will not be able to study them. All right. This will help. Why are we after this? Why do we want to connect this? Uh, you know connection reconnection. What is the significance? It will help us understand space weather Okay, space weather as you know space weather is significantly influenced by our Sun Right through its uh, you know temperature through the solar flares and through whatever you know emissions coronal mass ejections that are coming from there like Including now we can see that even the magnetic field of the Sun and its connection with the Earth's magnetic field Also is impacting space weather by you know releasing humongous amounts of energy and heat So it will help us understand the space weather better Right? It will help us understand the impact on GPS. How is the global positioning system getting affected during this reconnection and discussion SMS? How are the power grids getting affected? How is our communication network getting affected during these uh, 
you know uh, magnetic connection and reconnection events etc all this can be understood and remember since we are able to understand space weather better we will also be able to do something called as space weather forecasting so we can forecast forecast means in advance you are trying to see how the space weather is getting influenced okay you are able to predict in the future oh this is going to be the temperature range and things like that all right so this is your concept called as magnetospheric multi-scale mission all right just understand what is this magnetic connection reconnection disconnection etc this is nasa's mission all right along the same lines let us try to understand something called as berry sheet what exactly is this this is a private mission to moon this is done by an israeli non-profit company it is called as space isle not very important all right the idea why it's important is that it attempted to land on the moon but unfortunately instead of landing it crashed on the surface again what is special about this mission is that it was carrying many items which included something called as the dehydrated tardy plates okay as you know we have always wanted to put living objects on the moon living things on the moon okay uh, so we have had human beings there we have had dogs over there so anyway what we have tried to do this time is we have sent something called as tardy grades let's try to understand what these tardy grades are okay tardy grades they are the most strongest and most durable microscopic organisms okay these are microscopic organisms that means they are micro you cannot see them with naked eye they are very very small what is special about them is that they are strongest they are durable that means they can survive in a wide range of temperatures and conditions etc all right so these are actually called as water bears because of the resemblance in the appearance these tardigrades are actually called as water bear okay a tardigrade typically it eats fluids okay, fluids it uses its claws and mouth to tear open a plant and animal cell take and then what does it do it sucks nutrients out of them so this is usually the feeding habit of a tardigrade what it can do is it has these claws okay using these claws and mouth it opens up a plant cell or it can open up an animal cell and then it will consume all the nutrients present in these cells what is special about the uh, you know the tardigrades as i told you these are strongest and durable why because they can survive in extreme heat and also in extreme cold conditions all right so what happens is they expel water from their bodies and set off a mechanism to protect their cells and can still revive if placed in water okay so what basically is special about them remember if they are under some conditions for example you might have heard about hibernation etc right in such circumstances what these tardigrades can do is they can expel water from their body so they become dehydrated all right so this is a mechanism to protect their own cells all right after some time when the conditions are favorable what they can do is if they have access to water they can be revived with water okay they can come back to life literally see the organism on rehydration is known for coming back to life all right so that's what so when the conditions are not so good it can expel water it can protect itself it can stay like this for a brief period of time after that if you give these tardigrades some amount of water they will get rehydrated they will come back to life all right so what did we do as a part of this mission we send some dehydrated tardigrades all right this is the idea we are sending some microorganisms to moon the idea is to see how they are developing how they are able to survive in this new climatic condition that is present on the moon all right because of their durability and strength we decided to choose them and send them unfortunately this mission it was supposed to land on the moon but then it has crashed on the surface of the moon all right so what are the concerns so as you can see the main question is what happened to the tardigrades after the crash did they survive if yes then how did they survive as rehydration requires matter but it requires water so that means is there enough water content on the moon that those kind of questions can be addressed this has also raised a serious question of interplanetary pollution why because like this along the same lines you could be sending either microorganisms or you could be sending nuclear waste up there or nuclear experiments could be conducted so this is raising serious questions about interplanetary pollution how from one planet to the other you are polluting another planet right why because contamination could be a serious issue where evidence of life is yet to be right so in places like moon mars etc we are yet to see any scope or any signs of life so it is possible over here by carrying out pollution for example by putting these microscopic organisms like tardigrades we might be destroying life that might evolve in these places right that's what other plants uh, problems of course there are space debris space debris etc this have added to rethinking of how space should be used very wisely all right these are some of the concerns you can also look at them from an ethical point of view also right an ethics based question based on science and technology could also be asked along the same lines all right so nevertheless try to understand what these bear sheets are what this mission related to space il was and also who these tardigrades are so this is all for today i am going to take up a lot of such uh, 
current affair related materials in the future classes the lessons are going to be just around 15 minutes long so you know it's easier it's more fun for you to grasp all these concepts so that's all for the day stay tuned for more awesome lessons thank you so much have a good day